So uh, it's about homosexuality, unrelated, but. That's not a delicate topic at all. <laughs> this is a, sorry, this is a very important issue, I think, um, because, oh, what is the Islamic perspective on, or how do you discuss the Islamic perspective on homosexuality? Um, I think, you know, the, the Islamic, by the way, this is gonna get a little explicit which I don't care about. And Muslim scholars love sexually explicit stuff. Audiences sometimes don't like it, but you know what? I don't care. You're gonna to have to deal with it. If you wanna get mad at me afterwards, go ahead. So uh, the Islamic perspective on homosexuality, I think is a very good perspective, okay? In the Islamic tradition, your desires are not a legal issue. They're not a Sharia issue, okay? I can desire that watch, I really desire it, but I can't take it, okay? I can desire to commit zina with so many people, and virtually every teenage guy desires that. I don't know about teenage girls, I've not I've never been a girl, but the, I can tell you teenage guys desire a lot of things that they can't do. They can't do those things. Um, Muslim, interestingly, Muslim scholars, when they talked about attraction, of men to men or women to women, they didn't talk about that as unnatural attraction because they they saw that, uh, especially with like a young boy, that if a man is attracted to a young boy, what they're, they, they're confused because they see female beauty in the boy and they they desire the boy, right? So they, they didn't say that's unnatural. It was It actually was natural to be attracted to the female beauty. It's just the person was kind of confused. And sometimes they talked about medical conditions that they could that could cause this. So there wasn't this in the in the in the especially the modern Western tradition. There's this notion of uh, the unnaturalness of homosexuality. The word homosexual is actually coined in the 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 mid the mid 1800s, I think, by a, a Hungarian or Austrian psychologist who's talking who's diagnosing this psychological ill. It's something that's a, a disease you have in your brain. Something's wrong with you. That's not the way the Islamic tradition looked at it. The Islamic tradition looked at it. This is kind of a, a confused but natural desire. And, but you can't act on it. You can't act on it. Um, the Islamic tradition also, it doesn't, it's a very specific act that is wrong. That when you talk about liwat, Liwat, or the act of the, the people of Lot, of Lut, is, according to Fiqh, idkhal dhakar fi dubr dhakar kana aw muannath. Okay. <laughs> I mean, they asked the question. It's not my fault. Okay, it's uh, very explicit. It's, and it's, uh, that's the wrong thing. What you feel in your heart, what you desire, is not wrong. I mean, it's, it can't be, it can't be wrong, it can't be, it's not a crime. Because you're not doing anything. And in the, the Islamic tradition, as Imam Shafi'i said, uh, or it's often attributed to the Prophet, but it's really just a jurist uh, statement, Muslim scholars. We have been commanded to rule by what people act, how they act outwardly. God knows what's in their hearts. God knows what's in their hearts. So this is the Islamic perspective of homosexuality. What you're born with, what you desire, this is not um, anybody's business. It's, you know, you, you have these desires as I have desires. But if you engage in this specific act, lewat, this is a, a serious uh, sin. Like the other hudud punishments, however, the, the policy of Muslim scholars as judges and of Muslim courts has always been, you know, you, you, you create, you let the person off as much as you can with any ambiguities you can find. And in the case of homosexuality or the wat, it was really like kind of don't ask, don't tell. As long as you're not going out publicly and doing something like zina, you know, people, as long as you don't go out publicly and do something, it's really almost impossible for a Muslim court to bring you in and punish you for something. This is your problem, this is a sin you commit. The, you know, you, the, the Sharia has made clear the seriousness of this sin, but 
It's also made clear that it's the duty of Muslim scholars as judges, as the Prophet said, to udru al-hudud bi-shubahat. Ward off the hudud as much as you can by any ambiguity you can find. Let the person go if you can find a way out. It is better for the judge to err in mercy than to err in severity. So that's the Islamic perspective on homosexuality, as far as I understand it, uniformly. <laughs>